ladies and gentlemen, let's read GamingTech.com video. We have some fantastic news from Camp Microsoft. It has been confirmed that just like the PlayStation 4, the Xbox One will give you the ability to play the game while it is downloading. Now, of course, when the Xbox One was revealed back in May, we knew that as the games were installing from the disc onto the hard drive of the system, you would actually be able to play the title. Now, there was a purpose behind this, of course. Back then, the system required an always online connection, and therefore, the disc, once it had been installed, you could basically throw the disc away. Now, of course, the disc still must be in the tray. However, Microsoft have been extremely keen to encourage digital downloads, and there are numerous reasons for this. Um, but suffice to say, one of the best ways to do this would, of course, be to allow players to get hold of and start enjoying the titles as early as possible. Therefore, just like their rivals on the PlayStation, with the Xbox One, after a certain portion of code has been downloaded, say for example, the base code for the game, as well as the same, the base engine, as well as say a couple of levels, you will be able to start playing that title. And that's really good news because that means you'll be able to jump in a hell of a lot faster. And when you consider the games now are going to become a hell of a lot bigger thanks to the much bigger texture sizes and so forth that, of course, the amount of RAM on the console as well as the Blu-ray drive inherent into the system, you can imagine just how much of a difference that's going to make in ballooning the size of the games. So does that mean, that, and this is pure speculation on my part, does that mean that this is going to be the same for updates as well. Well, most likely for multiplayer focused games, probably not, because obviously you would not simply be able to jump into a server while you have an old portion of the code. For example, let's say you're playing Call of Duty Ghosts, and let's just make this easy. Let's say that your base game is 1.0, and the version on the server and that everyone else is playing is 2.0, and let's say that that 2.0 patch fixed various issues. Let's say, for example, that I'm just going to use a very silly example, but let's just say that in one particular area of one map, you could, say, semi-clip for a wall and still shoot someone through it, as well as, say, a couple of the guns were a bit too overpowered uh, on the base game, so that would be 1.0. Well, on 2.0, of course, that could remain a problem. On the other hand, what could possibly happen is when you join the server, though you won't be able to instantaneously jump on, you won't need to restart the game or whatever. It will simply say, okay, well, Tom has an old version of the code. It will first of all update your system and then allow you to play. That's just pure speculation on my point, uh, part, by the way. I haven't, that's not confirmed or whatever, but it would make some, some uh, level of sense. I have to say though, I really do like this feature. One of the concerns and criticisms I've always had with the previous generation of consoles, so that would be the Xbox, as well as, of course, the PlayStation, particularly the PlayStation 3, as it turns out, I found them a little bit sluggish, particularly the AI, sorry, the UI and navigation of the PlayStation felt very much a hindrance and very slow uh, at times. And so... Sony themselves admitted that one of the purposes of this was to get a much better cohesion and to make the whole experience a lot smoother. And so that's one of the reasons, of course, Microsoft have done this. Microsoft themselves, of course, are extremely keen on promoting digital downloads. And one of the best ways to do this, without question, is to ensure convenience. Because one of the reasons that people opt for digital downloads and one of the reasons that digital downloads now have pretty much eliminated most disc-based games on PC is simple, convenience. If a price is roughly the same, especially if it's a little bit cheaper, that's just a bonus. Most people will say, you know what, I've got the bandwidth spare and therefore I might as well just go for the digital download, at least I do. Um, and of course, as I said, games are going to become a hell of a lot bigger and therefore even if you've got a fast internet connection, it's still going to take you quite a while to download that title. Especially if, for example, your brother or whatever, or someone else in the house is using the internet, or even if their servers are getting hammered. For example, uh, pure, pure, um, pure uh, thought process on my part, pure uh, thought exercise. 
but my connection is more than capable of doing 16 megabytes per second download. I've got 120 megabytes per second connection. So Steam itself is normally quite capable of maxing that out. However, at the moment, as many of you guys are probably aware, the Steam summer sales are running. And so because there are so many cheap titles, the servers sometimes get absolutely hammered, even though they are using a CDN content delivery network and so on. But as it turns out, their connection goes all the way down. And although they're still able to meet demand, I still find my connection nowhere near caps out as it should be. Instead, it's dropping to about five or six megs per second, which isn't terrible. But when you consider a title like, say, Max Payne 3 on the PC, no word of a lie, it's about 30 gig install. That kind of sucks. Anyway, um, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I will... See you soon. Take care. Bye for now.